and uh, this this session will will um, uh, really be about life and quality of life. If you have had a severe cancer period or cancer treatment, what will happen next? So. Um, Quality of life is really one important goal in, in the Europe's Beating Cancer Plan. And uh, I leave the floor to you, Christine, to uh, really tell us more about it. Very welcome. Thank you. I've got all this. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Penelia. Thank you for inviting me here. I'm learning a lot, which is uh, something important in my current job. Uh, thank you. So my title was uh, officially... Uh, quality of Life Horizon uh, Europe Beating Cancer Plan. Um, but I officially, on the Cancer Mission Board uh, with uh, Penilla and Elizabeth. And so I will, of course, uh, summarize the quality of life recommendations and actions of the Mission Board. But I will show you also how much we work together with the Beating Cancer Plan and uh, Mayas, Matthias Schupp from the... Uh, from the DJ Santé has uh, sent me his slides uh, so that I can also present to you the actions of uh, the quality of life from the beating cancer plan. But I will essentially just underline what you heard uh, Commissioner Stella Kiriakides say also this morning in her comment. So, before Penilla tells me off, I'll move forward very fast. Right, so yes, it's been said this morning, we're in a unique situation. Uh, it's the first time that the European Commission has uh, two initiatives which are running uh, together, uh, which have been launched uh, in this European Commission, and they were both launched in 2021. So one aspect is through uh, research. It's uh, a new way to program research and innovation to make a difference, uh, which is the concept of missions. And the European Commission has set up five missions, and one of them is on the challenge of cancer. And as uh, you know, uh, the president, Ursula von der Leyen, when she arrived, launched the Euros Beating Cancer Plan. The previous one was in 1994. So we have these two initiatives. These two initiatives have very strong uh, implementation and uh, roadmaps. And we had uh, the strong support of the uh, European Parliament, uh, both because it represents, uh, of course, all the citizens, but also, as you may know, it represents one of the important bodies for the budget. And I would like to highlight the tremendous work uh, that uh, Véronique Trier-Lenoir did as rapporteur uh, for the Beating Cancer Plan, who sadly passed away uh, this summer. So the mission on cancer, uh, the board, uh, we were established in September 2019 to work on this new method of programming research and innovation to answer a challenge, and that was uh, cancer. We started right away to sit, and Elisabeth uh, Vedapas was with me at that time also. Uh, we sat from the beginning uh, with the Directorate General on Health, DJ Santé. As a mission concept, we had to have a specific goal that was quantifiable in a specific time frame. And so our aim was to save 3 million lives by 2030, a number that was not invented, but we had scientifically calculated it with the help uh, of Elizabeth, uh, which the goal was changed in the implementation plan to 3 million lives improved. But we also stated that we wanted to improve the quality of life and the length of life of the cancer patients. We have five intervention areas to be able to reach this goal, to prevent what is preventable, increase diagnosis and treatment, and of course, improve quality of life of the patients and their carers. This, of course, three pillars needed to um, be placed on the very solid soil, which is understand, and reaching up to, of course, extreme equity throughout Europe. You see here in the middle uh, our report, which uh, Marius Kienta has also had in a bigger frame uh, earlier, uh, which is the uh, recommendation of the mission board. And these recommendations, of course, as you can see, not only uh, 
were recommendations for the five intervention areas of the mission cancer, but also were for the goals of the beating cancer plan, as you can see, which is quite logic when you deal with cancer, the objectives of the beating cancer plan and the mission on cancer uh, are the same. And therefore we are working still continuously together. Each roadmap, each implementation plan has specific tools. Uh, we do not have the same tools as DJ Santé and of course they do not have the same tools as research and innovation and it's important that the two of us uh, work together. This report, and I'll uh, just stress this in a very important manner, was not just the conclusions of 15 board members. It relied also on the very strong consultancy that we had, not only with multiple stakeholders, including pe people who are sitting here today, organizations who are present here, but also patients that we contacted through focus groups and also going to specific meetings in towns. We were just at the beginning before the COVID uh, crisis. So in our recommendations, we have 13. Um, there are two which are really specific, uh, dealing with quality of life. Uh, and I'll just highlight what is in the keywords which are important in, in these two, uh, and I'll come back to them later. One is we specified that it's not only the cancer patients, but it's the survivors, the carers, and also we stress the citizens, which will have a diagnostics of risk of cancer, and this links to all the prediction and the screening uh, which we will have to deal with. It's no use telling patients that he needs to go and have a test, uh, and he's going to wait for this test. We need to be able to help the, the citizen to go to the screening and to accept or not the, the, the answer of the, of the test. Mental health, pain, palliative care is in the text, home care therapies, fight discrimination, the right to be forgotten, and Françoise Meunier will talk more about that. Tool to manage the disease, clinical and biological data that the patient may have to manage his disease, to be able to collect quality of life data, to allow the patient to participate in research and innovation. And all this uh, required that the patient wanted to have local, national and EU information about his or her disease and offer guidance to return to work and financial issues. So in the implementation plan of the mission on cancer, this summarizes uh, the objective uh, the implementation plan on the mission on cancer is a document written by Research and Innovation Director General. We only gave the recommendation in our report. So it's important that now it's part of the European Commission's, um, let's say, words. It's not just scientific people and citizens who who actually are writing this. This is really the policymakers who are writing this. So the objective is to improve the quality of life of cancer patients, survivors and their families through analyzing all key factors and needs related to quality of life. And the actions which are in the implementation plan collect and analyze data on today's unmet needs of cancer patients and survivors through quality of life metrics and indicators to capture key elements of quality of life of those affected by cancer, set up the European Cancer Patient Digital Center, I'll come back to that, develop early predictors for quality of life and design monitoring programs for survivors of childhood cancer. And I will just stop here because I don't have a specific slide on this action. Since last year, the DJRTD has been launching workshops with um, uh, adolescent and young uh, adults uh, which have survived cancer to be able to really understand their needs, the gaps that they tell us uh, should be filled to move forward. So this is the way it works out now. You know, we have the recommendation, the implementation plan, the actions. And of course, as we are in Horizon Europe, it comes through calls, uh, which allow to be able to have the community to answer uh, the, uh, the answers of, of these actions. What we have asked as board members uh, is that um, calls each year or twice a year come out with all the five intervention areas, we do not want to have one year all about prevention and the next year all about uh, quality of life. So it's, uh, it's something that they have answered and uh, regularly there's a topic 
uh, each topic has an action that comes out. Quality of life is right up there uh, on, on the corner in, in yellow, and I will summarize uh, the, uh, the ones which have already been out. And I'm stuck. And it does say next. So, uh, the first one uh, is, is something that I've said in the, uh, in the actions that we're taking, is that we noted in the board uh, that uh, it's going to be difficult to be able to rely on old questionnaires of quality of life to make any, in, any improvement. And so it, it felt that it was absolutely important for us to be able to collect from the patients, survivors, and carers, what are their current needs to be able to define the metrics uh, so that we can be able uh, to start from a specific information to be able to measure uh, the new interventions that will be able to improve the quality of life uh, of the patients and the carers uh, as of now and not uh, using questionnaires which are, are very old. So this is uh, the first call that came out and the consortium has already been uh, established and, uh, and has started uh, working. Uh, the second uh, call, which is the European Cancer Patient Digital Centre, uh, which has started, it's also a flagship, and I will, I will show it to you a bit later, I hope. Um, it's also a flagship of the Beating Cancer Plan. So some of our recommendations have been taken up uh, by the Beating Cancer Plan. And so this, um, this, is, a, uh, this is a tool uh, that has been asked by the cancer uh, patient community. Uh, they said that they wanted a tool to be able not only to manage their own disease, like for example, having uh, on an app or a website or a, a file, uh, let's say the results of their last um, time in hospital or their uh, recent blood count, but to be able also to find information, and we've heard it already today, on information on their disease, on whether to have a genomic or a genetic test, or what type of clinical trials are, are going on their disease, but also what type of financial help they can have. And, and so they wanted to have uh, some place where they could find this information adapted to their cancer and to their need. They also suggested, and this also was something that the research community asked, is that uh, they wanted to be able to have uh, the possibility for real-world data, quality of life, uh, reported outcomes, a tool where they can be able to say, today I feel happy, today I don't feel happy, I've got this pain, I don't have this pain, and etc. So a, a tool where they can be able to see whether uh, they feel better today compared to last year, uh, whether they can do physical activity. So they wanted to have this also. And so as you can see, uh, all these type of... Uh, we have this house that we, we show as, as the patient digital center. And so what I've been telling you can fit into different rooms of the house, right? So all these rooms are a way to collect data, but it's the patient's data. It's not a population data. It's not a hospital data. It's just one, data, one patient's data. And so in the end, uh, this tool can represent uh, a collection of one individual patient data, of clinical biological data, but also of his reported outcome. And it seemed important that this data could be used later on if the patient wishes to participate in research and to be able to share the data. So um, this is something that uh, is difficult to set up. It hasn't for the moment, uh, be seen as, uh, as very truly, truly uh, a crucial uh, initiative, probably because it relates to patients and, and it's not that easy to be able to convince patient organizations to work with data scientists and bioinformaticians to be able to move forward in this type of digital uh, app or digital center. Uh, but it started and uh, we hope to be able to move uh, forward rapidly. And Yes, but I can skip all this, because I've said it. There must be a French way of clicking that does not work with the sweet. Right. 
it works. Uh, so I can move now to, uh, so this summarizes, uh, let's say, the actions of the, beat of the mission on cancer. Uh, and now I will move forward to the beating cancer plan, which not only has specific types of actions that they can run, but thanks to the COVID crisis, uh, there's not a now a specific budget for health at the European Commission, uh, which is EU for health, and EU for health has uh, for each call a specific, let's say, uh, budget, which is for cancer actions. And so uh, the Beating Cancer Plan can also rely on the EU for health uh, funding to be able to launch actions. So improving quality of life uh, for the can Beating Cancer Plan, increased survival rate and increasing number of cancer survivors implies a shift of focus to how well and how long people are going to live. The aim is that cancer patients not only survive their lives, their illness, but that they live longer, fulfilling life, free from discrimination and unfair obstacles. Six dedicated actions, and I'll go through them, including one of the flagship, which is Better Life for Cancer Patient Initiative, Cancer Survivors Smart Card, European Cancer Patient Digital Center, and as I've said, it's the one I've been talking to you about. So the Cancer Survivors Smart Card, it's, it's, it's going to work with the Patient Cancer Digital Center. It's a tool, uh, in summary, that the patient will have in his own hand to be able to manage his disease and, and the way he lives his life after his disease. Fair access to financial services, the development of an EU code of conduct on fair access to financial services for cancer survivors. And as I've said, François Venier will talk to you more about this. Job retention and return to work. This is absolutely uh, crucial as our population of cancer patients either want to continue to work during the treatment or after the treatment. It's something which is very difficult to be able to put forward. And I also can push to making children go back to school. And so this uh, is uh, working on in June 2023, right up to 2024. Uh, there's a lot of expectations from policy perspective, active cancer stakeholder community, that needs to be involved in the quality focus of the cancer plan that needs to be also taken into account. All countries do not work uh, in a similar manner and liaison with the Horizon Europe mission on cancer and related projects because we believe that it's important uh, to increase the quality of life of uh, patients with cancer and after cancer. And there's also, because we were talking about this uh, at lunch, talk about good networking, uh, it's also crucial that uh, the carers also find a specific policy uh, way to be able to, uh, to continue to work while performing their work as carer. Strategy on the rights of persons and disabilities. So as you can see, there's, there's quite a, a number of actions which relate to health actions, not only to cancer, but where cancer patients and cancer uh, carers can fit in. So the strategy on the rights of persons with disability, it's a strategy uh, that will be, uh, that is working uh, through 2021 to 2030. It's already been adopted in 2021, addressing patients uh, with cancer. Uh, it's to study uh, essentially a guidance for, to help member states to set it up. Uh, a data of the pilot survey will feed into the European Cancer Inequality Registries that was published and presented uh, here uh, in Sweden. And two new inequality dimensions, disability and employment, will soon be integrated into the data tool uh, of uh, ECI. The Directive on Work-Life Balance for Parents and Carers, I, as you can see, we are strongly uh, highlighting uh, this, quote, population of, uh, of, uh, of the cancer uh, community, which is just not the cancer patients. A directive to be implemented by member states in 2022. And I was saying that in France, uh, the ministry will be uh, talking about this uh, for the carers uh, this week or next week. Conformity checks of national legislation, which is ongoing. 21 member states have notified full transposition. And the assessment of transposition is ongoing. And of course, what is also uh, crucial, it is legal steps 
uh, that have uh, been uh, implemented in the in the directive and as you can see that uh, all these actions are programmed in the roadmap uh, not only on health but also on cancer and it can be uh, very easily uh, followed uh, what we will we've been discussing uh, and i think francois munis talk will highlight it is the necessity to have guidelines to be able to go to the different member states to be able to show them the way uh, once again member states uh, do not have as a priority cancer uh, and if you facilitate their work by examples by success stories tools and guidelines it makes uh, their their work a bit easier. It's not easier for us because, once again, we are not working in Brussels. Uh, we meant to work at all uh, member states' level. And I think I have finished. Thank you very much. <laughs>